My name is Greg McLeod. I'm a currency strategist and founder and CEO of the EliteTradersUniversity.com. And it's so good to be with you here on this wonderful Saturday evening here broadcasting to you live from Dallas, Texas. And uh, so good to have you guys uh, in Facebook, in LinkedIn, and YouTube. And we're streaming live. This is a live presentation here. And a big uh, howdy do to all you guys. And uh, so we're going to get started. We're going to plan the week ahead. Uh, you know, we're going to start a new month. We uh, closed out July. And uh, last trading day was yesterday. And so we are going to be looking forward to uh, what comes up in August. Now, traditionally, August, uh, for the stock market anyway, is uh, uh, you know, can be pretty dicey as uh, traders, many traders are on vacation. So you have a decrease in liquidity, decrease in trading volume, which can either create a, you know, really wild uh, moves in the market or the market could be pretty dead. Okay. So we're going to look for some like pretty low volume types of, of moves. But, uh, you know, and people say, well, Greg, you know, you always talk about the stock market. Uh, the, the, the thing about it is that uh, we, uh, we are, uh, you know, we, people use, Forex, they use money to buy stocks. Okay, so one way that uh, one of the hallmarks or the foundations of Elite Church University is we look at that correlation between stocks and currencies, and able to capitalize on that, on those those big fluctuations, those big institutional order flow moves. So um, we're going to get started in just a moment here with bulls, with bears versus bulls, and uh, let me first of all let's. Uh, um, again, this is a presentation of the Elite Traders University. You can visit us at EliteTradersUniversity.com. Uh, and if you're interested in either uh, joining in mentorship, finding more about it, you can go to EliteTradersUniversity.com forward slash apply. Uh, if you go to our website, we have uh, lots of free gifts there. We have a free master class as well as the Forex Income Blueprint. We'll talk more about that later. But before we get started, I want to also uh, direct your attention to the risk disclosure on your screen to make sure you understand all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Greg McLeod. And again, I'm the CEO and founder of the Elite Traders University. I'm a 25-year trading veteran, and I'm one of the foremost authorities of short-term day trading and scalping. Um, I do a lot of high speed, high, you know, just in and out of the market very quickly. And also, um, I spent many years as a currency analyst strategist for one of the world's largest Forex brokers in the world uh, at Forex Capital Markets. And I uh, graduated from UCLA. I've been, uh, I'm a published author. You know, my articles are all through the internet. And you know, I have videos and live streams back from 2010. So I've been doing this for a while. Um, and uh, I help traders from around the world uh, using my proprietary scalping system called Pip and Run. Uh, Pip and Run is a forex scalping system uh, that looks for institutional order flow, and uh, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, uh, so let's get right to it. Let's uh, uh, one, one of the, the the things I like looking at is about trading the news because, especially in the low liquidity, uh, slow moving markets, you want to get some fast moves. You don't want to stay in the market for a very long time, and uh, sometimes that will happen. You'll get into a currency and you'll be stuck. So what we do is kind of focus. On the during this time to look at the news and one of the biggest uh, uh, the best tools that I have is uh, found within my uh, uh, indicator called my market heat map which is an arrangement of currency pairs by percentage change I'll go ahead and get that screen up for you right about here right up oh, uh, we're gonna move it over here right okay and well, let's let's take it to the home page my market heat map it's the arrangement of currency pairs by percentage change. It's the big tiles behind me. It tells us what's hopping, what's popping, what's dropping, what's not in the market. And it's a very cool tool, especially when they're you know, active market. Uh, green is trending up. Red is trending down. And gray, stay away. And you can try it for a buck. Um, but there's not just the heat maps that you'll find here, but you'll also find a suite of tools. And one of those tools that we have available to you is the uh we have our charts quotes economic indicator we have a number of it's like a swiss army knife of tools that you can use to be able to trade the market and my traders and uh that are part of mentorship use this daily in order to find opportunities in the market um so we want to be able to uh so you want to have access to this my, my, little, my little top secrets here that we have for mentorship and you can get, get a special deal there 75 percent off uh use heat 
the, uh, the coupon code HEATMAP75. You can try it for a dollar for seven days. It's the best dollar you ever spent. And uh, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to start with the economic calendar. And that's one of the key tools that I use to actually find out where the party is, where the activity is in the market. Because uh, in this low liquidity summertime environment, uh, traders are only going to be looking at the market when there's a lot of news that can drive price. News is like a big rock, and you throw that rock in the water, and that water creates ripples. Well, news is that rock that creates that ripple in price that allows us to be able to find some trading opportunities. And then using our predictive system, we're able to predict and forecast, you know, where the, now we know when the market's going to move. Now we can uh, capitalize on its movement, right? Okay, so let's find out where the parties are. Um, so this is for the week of August 1st, 2021. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, our first uh, announcement. These are in, should be in Eastern time. So you might have to adjust your clocks accordingly. You can use worldclock.com or some other uh, conversion tool if you're in another part of the world, or another part of the country where these times don't make any sense. You go, Greg, 355, what's that? Well, in my day, it's 3.55 a.m., so about 4 o'clock a.m., we're going to have news that's going to impact. This flag is the German flag. Germany is part of the Eurozone. In fact, it's one of the most, uh, one of the largest economies in the Eurozone. And so they have this, uh, a market manufacturing PMI. Now, I know some of you guys look at the economic calendar and go, yeah, 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 fundamentals. I don't want to hear about that stuff, Greg. Show me some price action. Okay. And I completely understand I don't trust fundamentals. I don't trust the fake news. And they'll say one thing and put a bunch of percentages and blah, 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 blah. And it will go the opposite direction. How many people have experienced that? Let me know in the chat box. It's like, yeah, right? So I don't hear the blah, blah, blah. All I know is that at 3.55 and about an hour after that, the, the, the euro, the currency of the euro, is going to be very active. Okay? So now I know what I want to trade. And when I want to trade it, okay? Does that make sense? Should make it makes sense, right? So I'm not going to be looking at the Australian dollar at this time. So you know, picking the right currency is probably one of the one of the uh, uh, things that you know most traders don't do, right? They 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 get stuck in some something that's not really moving or something like that. So we want to be looking at the those charts and even now pull up your analysis. Some great guys over at the, one of the groups. Um, Forex price action, and uh, you know, I, I, uh, Thomas joined the group. I want to say hello to Thomas Robinson and Colin, who just joined. Okay, and Yemi, I want to be a big shout out to you guys, new guys. Uh, if you're watching this, um, see if I can pull up a chat box to, uh, to actually uh, find see if anybody's online. And if you can hear me loud and clear, if not, then I'm, I'm in trouble, right? But uh, let's see if we have a Okay, come on. All right, I just want to see 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 if anybody's out there in, in YouTube world as well. There we go. So I find my tab there. Okay. So, so the euro is going to be in play at about 4 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, and then you're going to have you know the previous number 65.6. And the current number uh, forecast is 65.46. This is going to be unchanged. And PMI stands for Purchasing Managers Index. Basically, they survey a bunch of purchasing managers, find out what their opinion is about the market. We think it's going down. We think it's going up. We're going to buy a whole bunch of stuff because we feel that maybe the economy is going to be good. But we're not going to buy so much stuff because things might not look so good. So we're not going to buy anything. So purchasing, looking at what purchasing managers are going to do, because if they buy a bunch of stuff and everybody's too scared to buy anything or have, don't have any money because of, of COVID, then they're stuck with a bunch of inventory, right? Does that make sense? So um, but I wouldn't really pay attention to the number. Just pay attention to the one thing. And the one thing is that at this time, this currency is going to be in effect. So euro, euro pound, euro cad, okay, um, euro dollar, euro yen. You know, those would be very good to take a look at euro Swiss, okay? And basically you're looking for, hey, you know, Big money is going to be in this at this time, so um, we want to you know position ourselves and look alive. You know, set up our support and resistance levels. Set up your whatever technical access uh, indicators. We have a number of things that we use to access the market. But whatever you do, just 
you know, mark out your and then set your, your risk parameters, risk no more than 3% of your account in any trade. But we're going to be looking at the euro. And the euro has been, you know, it's trading off. But we'll talk about some technical levels just after this, okay? So stick with me. Hey, Quinn! Quinn likes my video. Got, got a big thumbs up. Let me, uh... Hey! How you doing? Here, here's this beautiful family, beautiful wife and kids. Quentin, my man. Awesome trader. Awesome family. Thanks for your support. All right. Anyone else out there, give me a thumbs up, a like. Let me know you're out there. Okay. We are going to be looking at the, uh, also at the, at 4.30. So not to be outdone at 30 minutes after that, about 4.30, we're going to have the UK market manufacturing PMI. And again, it's going to be unchanged. These guys who actually forecast probably don't want to like, eh, we don't want to, we're just going to say it's the previous number, you know, um, they just kind of fake these numbers, right? <laughs> fake news, but you know, they just, you know, they already know where they want to take this, right? They already know. Technically, technical pictures will always go forecast what's going to happen next. This stuff kind of like, you know, is after the fact. It's just that a lot of traders will trade the news and will be, take will take positions uh, at this announcement, all right? And sometimes it's good to wait an hour. So if you miss it, don't worry if you woke up late, you know, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. So if you wake up at 5.30, they'll probably, they'll put a really nice setup for you an hour later. And that's called the news fade strategy. Okay. If you want to find out more about that, get you know, send me a, a DM me. A, you know, I'm Greg McLeod on uh, Facebook. Just ask, hey Greg, what's about the news strategy? You know, and I'll and and reach out. You know, I'm <laughs> I like chatting. I love chatting about the market. So if you have a question, reach out, reach out, reach out, and touch someone. Remember that? If you do remember it, you're old like me. No, <laughs> it's okay. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and move right along. We have the, uh, at 10 a.m., 10 a.m. was going to be your U.S. news cycle, but usually there's an 8.30 movement in the market as well. 8.30 and 10, I guess. No, no 10.30, no no 8.30 news cycle. But we have ISM Manufacturing PMI. Um, the forecast call for 60.8 versus 60.6. And, you know, uh, again, we're not really paying attention to the number. We just know that it's a high-impact number at 10 a.m., and the dollar is going to be to move now that's going to open up your choices a lot more because now we're dealing with we have new york traders overlapping with with european traders trading at the same time uh during that new york session when this release comes out and we could see some uh, pretty volatile movements and usually when i trade u.s news i like looking at the euro dollar but lately the aussie dollar has been looking pretty good too okay so anything versus the u.s dollar and I want to tell you another little secret. I need you to listen up, take notes. It doesn't make any sense because if you don't, if you don't listen carefully, you're going to miss out. That usually, nine times out of ten, that if we have good U.S. data, that is bad for the U.S. dollar. Again, I'm going to say that nice and slow and one more time. Good news is usually bad for the U.S. dollar. Okay, the U.S. dollar is a risk-off currency. People run in case of zombie attack, nuclear disaster, um, you know, um, biological warfare, missiles being launched from Kim Jong Il and, and Un in uh, the North Korea, Russia invasion of Crimea. Anytime there's like earthquake, tsunami, if it's bad, the dollar usually rallies. Okay, because why? Because people will sell off their assets, sell off their stocks, sell off everything, and they will buy U.S. Treasuries. Because when they buy bonds, U.S. Treasuries, the principal is guaranteed. And remember, the number one goal of trading is capital preservation. Capital preservation, okay? So you don't want to be in the stock market if the world is coming to an end. You're going to find currencies like, you know, the you'll find the dollar Swiss, the dollar will rally. You'll find currencies like pound Aussie actually rally because... You're taking money out of risky currencies and you're moving them into a bond, some type of a highly liquid bond market where there is a guarantee of your principal. So you're not really concerned about making a return. You just want to get your money back. OK, so there's all this flight fight to fight, fight, flight or fight. We're either going from risk on to risk off. OK, risk on. Things are happy. Markets are moving up. Stock markets are going up. The yen is a risk-off currency too. So in case there's like some type of 
danger or horrible stock market crash, the yen usually rallies too. So the yen, the Swiss franc, and the dollar usually rally when there's super bad news. Um, when there's super good news, these sell off and pound and Aussie and Kiwi and CAD will rally. Okay, those are the currencies of global growth, especially Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar because they have so many raw materials that are necessary for a growing economy. Uh, Australia leads in the iron ore production. You need iron to build buildings. They lead in copper exports. You need copper for wires and pipes, for plumbing, and for wires for, you know, different like for electronics, okay? So you have New Zealand, they are the breadbasket of Asia. They produce, they have more, more sheep than people, and they export a lot of food to Asia. So when the economies are good, they need those raw materials. Uh, Canada produces a lot of lumber, okay? That's why we have the big lumber rally, because those countries, they call them com dolls, commodity dollars. And so those become in demand when the economy is very strong. So when we have good economic news, those are the currencies we want to be long, and we want to sell the weaker currency and buy the stronger currency. So the weaker would be the dollar, the yen, and the Swiss franc, and the stronger would be pound, Aussie, New Zealand, and Canadian dollar. Is that helpful? Does that, you know, that's kind of, I've given you kind of like the big, the big, mm, mm, the big secret, right? So, uh, you know, this is, I worked for a brokerage for years and I worked on the inside. So, you know, we probably not going to hear this in too many places. So anyway, moving right along, I'm not boring you. <laughs> moving right along, we have a, uh, this is the one that I really like. Um, is the uh, I love trading the Australian uh, rate decisions, and I'll probably do that this week for you guys. Um, RBA rate decision, uh, big, uh, rate decisions are some of the biggest announcements in forex. In, in forex, interest rates determine where the direction of the currency is going to go. Okay, now. It's widely expected they're going to keep rates unchanged. There's not going to be any big earth-shattering announcement like, we're going to hike rates. They're not going to say that. But they really they have a, a rate statement right afterwards, a press conference, and they talk about you know, what's going on in the economy, and they give you a forecast of when they may eventually raise rates, right? Now, uh, we might they might say something like, oh, the Delta variant's out there, and you know, uh, we might have to keep uh, rates low for a while, and that may cause the Australian dollar to sink. I don't know. We need to look at a chart to, to see that. But those are the kinds of things. Or they might say, well, the Delta, we have Delta under control, and we're fine, so we may normalize rates in 2022. And that could be very bullish for the Australian dollar. So it's not what they actually do, but what they actually say. Okay. That's called jawboning. Central bank well, central banks will often jawbone to get their interest rates to move, okay? Sometimes they want them to go down because it gives them a competitive advantage when they sell products overseas. They can say, oh, our, no, our economy sucks and our currency is not too great. But guess what? Now they, their products are cheaper. They get a discount because now the Australian, you can, you can buy more stuff if you're U.S. dollars in Australia. And that will, it, that will increase exports for Australia. And Asia does that all the time. Japan, weaker yen. You buy more Sony Playstations and Lexuses because, hey, their currency is weak. Okay. Anyway, moving right along. So, uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, it's going to be on, on fire during on Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. So, make sure that you set your clocks. And that's going to be a nice time. It's a little after midnight. So it's not too too uh, late for people in the uh, in the West Coast. Um, so we'll take a look at that. But guess what? It's going to be in play. Aussie, Euro Aussie might be interesting. Pound Aussie may be interesting as well. We can take a look at those charts too. And uh, any of the Kiwi, uh, any of uh, the New Zealand dollars called the Kiwi. So you'll look any of the those pairs will be on fire at this time. So you want to look from between uh, midnight. Uh, a little after midnight uh, and then later on in the day like around uh, 645 you'll have New Zealand as well and since they're geographically close uh, both currencies kind of like mirror each other sometimes so moving on to Wednesday we have the market PMI another PMI coming out of UK 
but this is really interesting. This is going to lead us into um, Super Thursday. Okay, this is really big. As this happens every every other month, it seems like. Super Thursday. Say it with me. Super Thursday. Okay. Super Thursday is in the UK. It affects the British pound, and they have a slew of announcements. You know, look at this. Thursday, August 5th, mark it on your calendars. It's it's a pound palooza. I mean, circle it, mark it, set an alarm, get yourself a British flag and a cup of tea, you know, and some crumpets, and um, boom. It's going to be boom. It's going to be major because you're going to have GDP market construction PMI. You're going to have uh, the BOE asset purchase facility, then a Bank of England rate decision, and then a bank of, you know, you're going to have the votes for, uh, you know, people, how many people will vote for a cut, how many people will vote for a hike. Um, it'll probably be nine, nine to zero to zero, which is a weird score. It's like three teams playing against each other. No. Um, so they have three votes. One vote is either to keep rates unchanged, a vote to cut, and a vote to hike. Okay. So, uh, looks like we might have a unanimous unchanged, right? Um, and then we're going to have a monetary policy summary. So we're going to have this kind of, a, and the, you know, our, we're going to have like a, almost like a press conference. So all this, you know, this inflation, usually there's an inflation number that comes in too. With the minutes, they actually, a lot of countries release their minutes the week after. They actually put their minutes out the same day as a statement, which is, that's, that adds extra ump too. So all this is going to happen at 7 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday, August 5th. August 5th is going to be huge for the British pound. Okay, British pound has been an uptrend. I just before we get to the technicals, I just you know. So anything this does is just going to create some more turbo in its engine there, right? Um, now later on at uh, about 1900, which is like uh, 7 p.m. We're going to have RBA governor low speech and the RBA monetary policy statement. Okay. So remember, we just, we had the RBA interest rate decision and see, they did their statement like later on. Right. So we have that statement that's going to come. So they have, that'll give us some more bang in the, um, the Australian dollar. Okay. So uh, that's a currency that we want to be in play. So um, then Friday, this is the granddaddy of them all. This is the number one, the number one economic announcement that you need to pay attention to and usually is that the first friday of every month on on uh, you know at 8 30 a.m eastern time we have non-farm payrolls nfp you might have heard the term nfp or non-farm payrolls you must say greg does anybody still work in a farm I go, yeah there's some farmers out there but guess what we're not counting them. they don't count right now well we we, we want non-farm not farm payrolls there is no fp well greg is there a farm payroll number no <laughs> there's a non-farm payroll number so we got non-farm payroll sorry farmers out there don't be hating don't be sending me no emails about greg be hating on the farmers man you know yeah you know, you can get that big eating uh <laughs> eating your out your own garden you know uh <laughs> Anyway, non-farm payroll. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just hear farm. I don't hear non. I just hear farm. You know. They, what do they call it? Business payrolls or or I don't know. It is. You're not a farm. There's no farm, right? You know, it was really interesting. I don't see something I haven't seen in a long time is ADP. You used to have the ADP employment announcement, and you don't see ADP here anymore. And ADP was interesting because they were a paycheck company. And they issue a number based on, hey, if you got you got a paycheck, you're a part of a number, right? NFP was, you know, included government jobs and and stuff like that. ADP didn't. Okay. So I guess ADP, they don't do that anymore. But you guys remember the ADP announcement? It used to be the ADP came out on Thursday. And it might be under a, a it might be a medium term number. Let me check that. I mean, they could just get rid of ADP. I guess they did. Well, what do you know? They got rid of ADP. So no ADP announcement. But anyway, non-farm payroll is the biggest, biggest announcement. The granddaddy of them all. This is where we get, you know, huge moves in the currency market. And I remember I told you about the rock that goes in the water that creates the big splash. Well, this is a meteor that goes in the ocean, creates a giant tsunami of price action that just wipes out your account on the wrong side of the trade, right? 
But if you are on a surfboard and you're carefully positioned in the right spot, you can surf the wave of the price action and make a gang of money, right? Or wipe out, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, how it, you know how that goes, right? But, uh, you know, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to tackle uh, Don Farm Payroll if you want to be with us. Ooh, I you know I might be in, I might be in Detroit. I might be on a plane in Detroit. No, I'm not trying to. Well, Greg, you just don't weasel out of it. No, no, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna visit my aunt and uncle. They are gonna be in Michigan. If you are in the Michigan area or Chicago area and you want to have coffee or something, let me know. You know. Um, so um, yeah, just remember that. My, my wife's like, oh, my God, you gotta get together, you gotta get together. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, honey, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's it for the uh, so non-farm payroll. Oh, let's let's see the number, right? Okay, so eight hundred fifty thousand was the previous number forecast call for nine hundred twenty-six thousand, and that's a lot of jobs being created. Considering that you know we are, you know, with millions of jobs lost due to COVID. So this rebound, and um, we're expecting uh, the interest, uh, the earnings. It's the earnings. Usually, they give, the unemployment rate, they used, to, they used to give it that to us. They don't give that to us anymore. Okay. Okay. So anyway, that is the technical picture. I mean, not the technical. That is a fundamental picture. Those are the economic announcements and releases that we should keep in, uh, um, in mind for. So we want to be look, We want to look at the dollar. We want to look at the Australian dollar and the pound as uh, big moves. Okay. Canada is also going to have some moves on Friday, but with all the the movement on, um, on Friday, um, you know, Euro, CAD, uh, dollar, CAD, any any of the dollar pairs will be in play. Um, if we have a very good number, well, you, you know, like you saw with last time I traded on our payroll, is that we had the initial surge because people think, hey, the dollar things are good in the U.S. and then it reverses, right? And then we have this huge reversal, and then usually that sets the tone for the rest of the week. Um, so sometimes when you see that week of non-farm payroll, you know, maybe you won't get these big moves that we normally would have especially you know it's summer and it's the week of non-farm payroll i call that the crust in the peanut butter and jelly sandwich um calendar where the crust is the top week the last week end of the week a lot of the end of the month a lot of traders start you know opt out of trading then too and you know closer to the weekends you uh, don't have a lot, of, a lot of volatility there so you get that little meat in the middle that soft mushy spot of the of the of the um, peanut butter sandwich that's where you make all your pips that tuesday wednesday thursday um but anyway i tried to trade the crust on friday you saw what happened it, it was kind of ugly <laughs> but anyway that's another story oh let's go ahead and just get right to the charts guys thanks so much again for being with me and again uh if you like uh, my market heat map uh we'll take uh, take a look at uh there's nothing going on right now but we, we can go all instruments we can look at crypto and uh, you know look at the you know the you know we have bitcoin at the top of the heat map but it's all gray right now because the the markets aren't closed the market never closes the trading desks are okay so there's a misnomer you know it's the trading desks that are closed the market is actually 24 hours a day seven days a week. it never really stops but the broker closes so there guess what you know uh, unless you trade up a middle eastern bank where <laughs> they uh they are actually they don't close on saturday uh, for business wise okay let us go into uh let's go to uh let's go to traders way or trading view sorry trading view and i want to start we i want to start analysis with the us dollar the dollar index the dollar index or is the dxy it's the uh it is the um basket of currencies versus the us dollar and the key, another key, I'm going to drop some another key, another piece of knowledge. If you understand how to trade the U.S. dollar index, well, then you unlock the other seven currency pairs, right? The, you know, the majors. The ones versus the U.S. dollar are called the Forex majors. The euro versus the dollar. The pound versus the dollar. The, the dollar versus the, the cat. The New Zealand dollar versus the dollar. The Australian dollar versus the dollar, right? So you... So you've got those. So if you understand that, if this is going down, all those other currencies are going to be going up. So it's like you get like seven for the price of one. Hey, it's almost like one of those uh, Kmart sales, right? Or buy one, get one free. You buy the dollar and you get the other six currencies for free. Okay, 
So this was bulls versus bears. Remember, this is the diagram I drew. I said we will have this kind of maybe push into, um, you know, into a supply zone, which is this red zone that we had. And then uh, we break this rising trend line. We did. And guess what? We went down. Okay. So uh, we had lower high, lower low, stair step pattern. And we moved down. Um, we moved down to the bottom of this zone here. I mean, there's still, I mean, this zone could be a little bit wider, really, right? But we came down pretty, pretty cool, right? In fact, we can take a Fibonacci from this low. And I was actually talking to some guys in the, in the forum that, you know, how I take targets, and I go, hey, I just go from one Fibonacci to the other, right? So we went from this low of 89.52 to this high of, uh, that, that was the July 20th high of um, 93.18. We established a high and a low. It's like you draw your fibs like a Drake song from the bottom to the top, and now you're here. You're the whole team here. You know, okay, okay, anyway. So that was our, and now we've got a stair step down. A, B, C, or one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. Elliott way here. And we got, what? oh, look at this. Looky, looky. 38% retracement, right? You didn't have that. When you when you connect those two lines, all you have is this. And we look for a target of between here and here. And guess what? We came right there. 90, very, I mean, 9180, and we bounced, right? So we have a bounce there, and so now we draw another trend line for forecasting. So what this meant with a Dexy dropping like this, dropping from uh, when we got in or talked about it, because you, you know you can trade D DXY in the futures market, but I don't trade it. But 93.00 down to uh, 91.80, you know that's uh, you know uh, what 200 and 150 150 pips or points there. Boom. Okay. So. That means that, you know, Aussie dollars rallying, pound dollars rallying, euro dollars rallying, New Zealand dollars rallying, dollar CAD was falling out of bed. In fact, dollar CAD looks just like this. And I had popped that in the room about dollar CAD. You know, I said, hey, about dollar CAD, guys. Who traded dollar CAD? Let me know in the chat box if you trade dollar CAD. I, I had posted that. But anyway, so we've got this. So we got this bounce. And look, this is, this is, uh, pretty cool because uh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, no, okay, get rid of that. Th there's support right here, there's another level of support right here where, where you can see where we had price came down twice, and then we're tagging that same area over here. Okay, and it should be, I'm gonna make it green it's bullish right buyer stepped in and so you know what happens is sometimes they'll put their buy limit orders there and a buy limit order is an order to get long uh below market price right so that's why i hit that thing and this big giant candle as orders buy orders are being triggered right and so now you've got this this big bullish engulfing bar on this four hour chart okay so as long, so we got to draw another trend line and see if that trend line holds. So we go back to, you can go back here and if we go here. Okay. That line, or this is the line we draw, All right? I'm going to make it green because it's a demand line. Demand, when you buy stuff, you demand it. So when price came down to the demand line, people bought, they demanded it and it price jumped off that line, right? So this is our, our demand line. And it's old, um, old school um, geometry. Two points create a line, right? And if you ditched or you were asleep when the teacher was talking about that, she's probably rolling in her grave saying, ha ha, you should have listened to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, whoever's going to use geometry, you know, that stuff is, uh, oh, excuse me, teacher, when am I going to use this in real life? In the future, you will be in a, in a video think with Greg, and Greg McLeod will show you how to make money with this, okay? So make sure you pay attention, because it will happen in the year 2021. Okay. Anyway, so. <laughs> so, there, so we have a pull back to this line. As long as this line holds, we're bullish. If this line breaks, 
then we could cascade very fast because these are large gapping candles. We could come down to the to these other Fibonacci's, right? We can come down to the 50% retracement now at 91.35, right? We can come down to uh, the 618, 90, 90, 90, 92, right? It also corresponds to an old high we had on May 13th, okay? So that is our supply line. I mean, demand line. His, now let's put our supply line. Our supply line connects the two swing highs. We're going to connect those. But we're going to make this one red because people sell. When price comes up to the line, see, it came up to the line and it sold. Okay, but we have two points, right? So the third, so we need the price to either will break the low or break the high. The high is 92.19, right? If we break 92.19, we could you know rally back up to 92.57 okay so what we have is when we have a rising demand line and a sloping supply line it's a triangle <laughs> all right there's more geometry right it's like greg is falling get off the geometry it's like don't worry. you need to understand geometry because when you have a trend it's like a sentence with a question mark at the end and the and the triangle asks a question it's a, am I going to go up or am I going to go down, All right? That's the question. This is your question mark at the end of the sentence. The sentence was, we're bear, 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 bear. Am I still bearish? Question mark. A break above the high, we're bullish. And we're bullish to probably 93.16. Um, if we're bearish, then we come down. There's a stick sandwich down here, 91.37. Stick sandwich are two candles with a... Two bullish candles of a bearish candle stuck in between, like a sandwich. And usually they mark price like that's where they want to take it. And they mark price ahead of time. But that's my advanced course, so <laughs> we won't go deep into that. But basically our decision point is here. 90, uh, we look at uh, 92.16 or 92.20. And the low, 91.77. So bulls versus bears, uh, I don't know, right? Um... If you were in a um, sideways channel, and usually when we uh, go from the low, we go to a high, we went to the high, and now we have a lower high, um, then, uh, you know, I, I'm going to take a gander and I'll probably, uh, you know, he's like, well, Greg, what is it, bullish or bearish? And I'm going to, I'm actually going to, um, you know, I'm going to be, I am a bear. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be bearish on that, right? So bull versus bear, I'm a bear. Okay. So that really that's okay, that ends the show. Okay, see you later, bye, that's it. Because if you know that, then guess what? Well you're gonna be long all the others, right? And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let me turn off my bear. Burr! I got the sound effect. Okay. Alright, so let's take a look at the next thing. Let's take a look at the Euro. And um if you have any questions, you know, pop them in there. I'll see if I can. If you come over to, to the um, the Forex Cash Machine, if you come over here and get get in this chat box, it makes it a lot easier because uh, my other screen is over here, and I'll keep looking away. Let's come over here. Oh my God! Like, what's he looking at? Okay. So let's come over here. Uh, you can go the Forex Cash Machine, T H E the Forex Cash Machine dot com, and then join. Okay. Up oh, to this guy crypto guy right um and, the, and we'll talk about some bitcoin too okay we'll, we'll talk about some bitcoin okay so look at the euro eur usd and forex nice oh yeah i'm not gonna find this one right forex all right and now here you'll see a bunch of lines i've drawn and these are classic support and resistance levels. The blue ones are weeklies, the green ones are dailies, and the four hour ones are um, there as well. Okay. So we can see that price um, all this time has been trending down. And then uh, we, no, we, we, uh, we were bullish yes, uh, last week, right? And we had a triangle. This is our triangle from last week. Right, I said, "Hey, got demand line here, supply line up here." The price rallied up, broke down, came back down, and broke out and kept going. Right, and it went to a 1.618 expansion. Just a little bit beyond that, really. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of all this spaghetti. Okay, 
So there we go. So now we've got this nice move. We never we never retested the old low, right? And now we have a, a, a really nice uptrend, right? An established uptrend, higher swing highs and higher swing lows. But Greg, how about all that price action back there? It's like, yeah. But you know, you've got almost like an inverted head and shoulders working too, where we dropped, we broke out. And you know, we have some old highs back here at 119.65, right? So we, um, you know, and we're sitting on support right here. So, I mean, we're at a nice point where, hey, we've got two points. Remember, two points make a line, right? So let's do that, do our geometry thing. We got a point there. We got a point there. And so um, we're at a nice bit of support. And I know um, there's some people who are who are bearish the euro, and I can understand why in light of all of that. But this line actually goes here. Okay, right. We broke that trend line, so we just take this old trend line and just give it some. We're gonna re repurpose, recycle, reuse. We can take uh, this line here, this this high point, this wick, right connect that to this wick or this group of candles here. It's not a wick there. And now we have a supply line. And then we have this demand line, which should be green. Supply and demand. We have a triangle. Hey, hey, Greg, there's a triangle there. Yeah, it's a triangle. So it's basically saying, hey, I'm, am I still bullish? Question mark. The question mark is the triangle, right? And the answer will be, if we break above 119.08, boom, we've got old weekly resistance at 119.61, right? Usually we go from weekly to weekly. So we actually, we, we bounce from below this weekly to above this weekly, and the next weekly is here, right? Um, so we've got this, and we are, we're in an uptrend, and we're sitting here. We have a Harami A, which is a, a, a bullish reversal candlestick pattern. Harami means skin on the belly. And you might see some guys on the beach, you know, with that little skin on the belly, too. They're not pregnant. No, are they fire they pregnant, right? So skin on the belly is harami. That actually is a Japanese term for this, right? So it's like a mommy with a with a baby or um, an old dude with a beer, butt, beer gut, right? <laughs> anyway, it's bullish, right? And um, so we look for a break. Uh, we can actually look for maybe a break up of the highly candle. 118.69 would be my trigger. Um, and I, I would be constructively long on this. So, you know, bulls versus bears. I am a bull. Bull. Okay. There you go. And, you know, remember, this is EUR versus USD. I, you know, we looked at the dollar looking bearish. Well, that's, that's what's going to, we're going to see this a lot. And so the euro, um, again, I would, you know, drop into a lower time frame. And um, again, when you go really small time frames, like in the, the where I go, like in the tick charts and the five minute charts, I might play it both ways because the fluctuation of the candles, you know, I'm actually playing the fluctuation of the candles. So, um, so a lot of that will you'll probably see. Well, Greg, you got a bunch of sell trades on the euro. What happened? Yeah, well, you know, after it pops up, there's gonna be profit taking, and I'll write the profit taking. But I'm in it so fast, I can't. I'm not gonna make an announcement. Well, right now I'm short the euro because the time you get into it, you're gonna get stopped out. Right? So, oh, what did I do there? I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that's right. We want to take a look at the next currency, um, and I want to take at the Australian dollar because we have the Australian rate announcement coming up. Now, this is very interesting here. I don't see. Oh, this is not what I'm looking for. You know why? Because I have my lines. My lines are on this one. Yes. Yes. Oh, supply zones everywhere, right? Um, we have, actually, this was a demand zone where, where we got that from. That should be green. Okay. Demand. Price came into the zone. Buyer stepped in, rallied into the supply, came back down, rallied up into the supply again. Now, with all these, this long drawn out price action in the overhead supply zone, right 
Usually that means that the, the, all the cell orders are pretty much gone. So if this thing were to turn up and go up, it might just gap right through all of this stuff, right? And this may be just a way of crunching out all that, getting all those guys out. Because see here, this is bullish, right? We had, we said, well, Greg, I see two red candles. How can this be bullish? It's this last candle here. This is a doji. And a doji is a candlestick. It's like a cross, right? Like a T. And it means indecision. And I always say it's almost like religious. Kind of like decisions are made at the cross, okay? Where you got price will go to heaven, a break above the top of the cross, or it's going to go to hell if it drops below the bottom of the cross, right? So we got this cross. And when we find these crosses, these spinning tops or these small body candles, what's going on is it's a tug of war between the bulls and the bears. Bears want to take it down. Bulls want to take it up. When the bears took it down, price snapped back. So all those, so this was a full-bodied red candle. You were at to see this in slow motion or see it over time, over the four hours it took to form. Okay. It wasn't green. It was red, right? It was a full-bodied red candle. The bears are high, high pawing each other. Hey, we're going to take this lower. We're going to buy a new cave and some honey. It's a bear market. Woot, woot. Woot woot, it's unbearable, right? But what happened was um, the bulls, you know, got you know actually the, the bears they ran out of juice. They they party too hard, they're tired, and it's, oh wow man, this is tough. I can't get this thing lower. We can't bring it down lower. Oh wow, and then oh, we can't get it, and then oh we can't do it. And then, oh, boom, right? And the bulls tried to you no, know, probably at first the bulls tried to take it up. Right, the bulls tried to um, they tried to take it up. They tried to to um, to get it to to push it higher, but they got pushed down too. So they tried. Okay, we got we got it. We got it. The the bears are out of it. And then, bam, smack down. Right, and but um, so we're just left with this cross. So this tug of war, bulls versus bears. Bears tried a lot harder than the bulls did and got hit back. And so now they're scared. Like, oh, I don't think we're in trouble because we couldn't keep price down. And look what you have here. Connect the two wicks. And then you have a... You have a... Uh-oh. You have a... Um, what's this thing called? Rising trend line. Demand line. Right? Two points make a line. So let's say you were to take this trade again. This is no, this is for educational purposes, and we are not advocating any trade. However, if then something like this, where our stop could be below the low of the wick, and the the, the dojis, the doji candles, doji stars, morning stars, they provide a really good way of getting into a trade. I, somebody had asked in one of the forums, like, now where do you get you no know, in? Well, I have this weekly, this blue line is a weekly line that I drew from way back. See, we when we got behind it, it rocketed up. If you go back, go back, 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 back in time for like, go back for like months. Um, you know, we, we bounced on that line again. We came up, came back down. We finally broke it. You know, I mean, it came really close several times. It rejected, like rejection on that line. So, I mean, this goes back to 2020, and we go back to, you know, look, um, we got here. Okay, so here we go. Same line, and this is 2018, okay? Price rally, drop, rally, drop. Bro look, gap at the line, gap back below the line. So this line that I drew, well, I mean, I drew it on a, on a monthly or weekly chart, and look at this, a tag of the same line and a rebound. So this 7342, there's a lot of history behind it, right? There's a lot of history. It's like like an, your ex-girlfriend or ex-wife. There's history here, right? And so price gets triggered because of history. Just like people get triggered because of history. <laughs> no, I'm not speaking from experience. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> but look at that. History. There's lots of history here, right? Look at that. Don't know much about history. Well, you need to. You're gonna re you're gonna repeat it if you don't know it, right? And look at that, right? So, so, so we see that line and that line. Oh, let me get back back to the back to the present, right? 
Uh, back to 2020. I know there's a faster way of doing it. Kind of like go back to like go to today. Uh oh. Everything is weird. Okay, here we are. Yeah, here we are. So we're we are so we're sitting here at this line that we're talking about, 7342, right? We saw 2018. This line was very important in 2020 and 2017. We saw this is very important, right? So if this line holds and we get back above this blue line here, then this all this um, this supply is probably all depleted because it's been hit numerous times. And they have not been able to get prices any lower. So they might just abandon ship. This might also just vanish. And we can see prices move higher. Especially with the US dollar not going to help either, right? So we can look for maybe price going up to the next line. 74.15 and maybe as high as 74.58, right? We've got this kind of consolidation and we could probably come back and move even as high as 74.85, right? So, uh, you know, you might see an initial, when the announcement comes out for the, you know, the Australian dollar uh, deal, you know, the rate announcement, we might come back and re-tag this to make it like a double bottom or triple bottom, 73.13. So you might be able to scalp it south for like 10, 15 pips, but when that thing reverses back above 70, I say a trigger like 73.46. Uh, then we're probably going to go off to the races there. It's going to be really, really, really nice setup there, right? So again, we have uh, so bulls versus bears. Um, um, you know, boom! Roar! <laughs> Put your horns on. <laughs> bulls hit the hit the prices up. That's why it's bullish, right? All okay. right, all right. Moving on along. All right. Um, let's look at the uh, pound versus U.S. dollar. Because it's going to be Super Thursday. Super Thursday. It is so, I mean, can you imagine being trading a market where they got something called Super Thursday? It's like, you know, hey, that's pretty cool. Man, I'm going to be trading Super Thursday. Yeah, well, pretty cool, right? So here's Super Thursday. And this is really interesting because, again, we had uh, prices. Oh, this is a uh, four-hour chart, Right? And uh, we just been, I mean, really, like since March, we really haven't gone anywhere. You know, one spot, 4241 on the high side from the high from uh, February 23rd, 2021. We got down to a low, we got as low as uh, 135.65. So we're basically stuck in about 700 pip range. And it seems like this buy support, sell resistance, buy support, it's like rolling stock. It's like rolling up and down, right? We would be if you bought here, it went up, and then we came back down, and hit here, it came back down. We were stuck in this like pong. This was like pong. Beep 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 beep. Boom! Breakout, right? You know Steve Wozniak and Stephen Jobs invented breakout at the Atari company. They were Atari employees. Apple was founded by two ex Atari employees, and they used Atari parts to make the first Apple. I have to keep telling myself that. Okay. Um, so we broke down below and now we came back up. Okay. So so this was an extreme move below support, below um this was an I this I'll make I'll make this green, a demand zone, right? So price came through. They tried to push it down, and the guy as low as uh one spot three five seven seventy, right? And then they tried again, and then boom, in your face, rejected. And you can see I had uh, actually had a little bit of a, I said we would go up to the top and then break down. So we actually it went straight down, right? We didn't even bounce. We didn't even bounce off there. We just broke through. But we are back up. Our, sub, our demand zone held. And now we have like a series of like demand zones, just demand, demand, demand. Stacking demand zones and, uh, you know, eventually we'll come back and test, but probably not now. We can have, we have a rising trend line. We can connect the swing lows here, higher highs and higher lows. Higher highs and higher lows, where she stops, nobody knows. All right. We're back in this old zone, which was supply. 
price rallied there and dropped to a trend line. And again, we have a similar pattern like we had on the Aussie with a bearish candle and a small body candle that's called a Harami pattern, a bullish reversal candlestick pattern. I know it's like, but Greg, this is a big red candle. It's just a small green candle. The green guys are not very strong. They're small. But don't they? Size doesn't matter here, right? <laughs> I, I would look for a breakout above 39.12. If we can crack the high, I'm, I'm going to say, well, where did you get that from, Greg? I pulled that number right out of my hat. No. Here we go. I'm going to zoom in, zoom on in and show you what I'm talking about. Price came down and rallied up and then went a little bit lower. So we can break the high of that candle. And the high is 39.12. Because this basically is forming called like an opening range breakout kind of range there. I'm not going to make it blue because my blues are reserved for my weekly, my weekly candle. My weekly, I'm sorry, my weekly trends, right? Let me make that, uh, I don't know, uh, orange. Okay. Orange. Aren't you smart? There we go. Orange. Right. So there's your range right there. If we break below 38.86, then we go back. I mean, we've got demand zone. All that congestion sitting there. And price is probably, you know, they're like, ah, I don't think we want to fight these guys. They're like really determined to take this up. We're good. Um, so, you know, we might move sideways a little bit. But see, what will happen is Harami is half of a morning star candlestick pattern. And a morning star candlestick pattern is a bullish candlestick pattern. It's a three candle pattern. Um, so we will look for a another, but it'll be a different color. It'll be green, right? We look for some type of a reversal candlestick pattern here, right? And we can draw a steep trend line too and get in super early. I, I, I no, I would look at, there we go. This is like, and if we can't get, a, we can do across the corners of the candles like that. And look for your entry somewhere in that area. Maybe, you know, even where, where, where we close, we close at 3904, you know, then, you know, if we were to use a risk reward kind of deal, we can say, okay, if I got long here and my stop is there and then um, the old demand zone is, the old supply zone is there. Well, that's a pretty good, that's a 2.2 to 1 risk reward ratio. Right? You just adjust your position size to risk no more than three percent of your account in any trade. Again, this is this is I'm just this is for education purposes, not a not a um what do they call me trying <laughs> I'm not I'm not a tipster. Okay. Education, right? Because you could easily take this trade, it will go south and retest this old low, right? And you need to have a stop there. Because that's if because if you're you're not the only one gonna be wrong if this stops out. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people place their stops because this is liquidity right here. Liquidity is right there, right? And if somebody wanted to, if they had enough lean, another power, they could lean into that, trigger some stops, and then take off, right? So um, always keep that in mind, right? In fact, okay, for instance, that that happened here. Oh look, got a long weak candle. Place my stop below the low. Oh, stopped out. Oh, then it went up, right? That's a, that, that's a that's a trick, right? Market maker trick. Wick, lower wick, and then take off, right? But then if you don't take it, guess what? It starts here and keeps going. So, again, those little nuances in trading that you learn when you're in mentorship, when you work with someone who's been around as long as I have, 25 years, you can learn a whole bunch of stuff. You don't have to make the same mistakes I've made, and you can stand on the shoulders of, of, of a professional because uh, the, the, the three instructors I have on staff are all professional traders who trade their own book and make money. They eat what they kill and live off their trading. So um, the League Traders University is the best place to learn uh, how to trade. I worked for a uh, Forex uh, currency broker for years and years and years. And so I can take those insider tips and help you make money. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Super Thursday is coming up, guys. So I just don't look at this probably getting here. Now, it could tank, all right? I'm serious. If, if a lot of people are bullish and we break this low, uh, you know, because we do have maybe a little bit of a triangle here, right? And this thing could actually break lower, right? So I'm not 
the Bulls versus Bears, I am bullish, but let's take a fib from low to the high and see. See, we're at the 23% retracement, and this doesn't really hold that often. It really doesn't. 23% uh, usually is kind of wonky. So it might be interesting to see what happens. You know, I, I would love to buy here. You know, ideally, I like to buy it down at the 3826. Here, it's kind of like, uh, we might get a push up and then a drop and then a move higher, right? I, I would just watch this. So bulls versus bears, I'm undecided. I, I guess I'm short-term bullish, right? And since I'm a short-term trader, that's fine. But don't be surprised if this doesn't go lower later on, right? Because we do have some news coming up. And then we have Super Thursday. So one news item may take it one way. One news item may take it the other way. But um, just be aware of that low. We cracked 38.82. We could come back down to test um, 38.26. So um, I wouldn't put this in the bag. I mean, eventually long term, longer term, like the end of the week, right? Um, and we might trend down before non-farm payroll. Non-farm payroll comes up and it rebounds sharply. And I would see 142 come into play, right? I think we uh, we, we, we retrace this drop. We would have some type of a, a retrace of all these gapping moves down from Brexit. And we're actually, you know, longer term, I think the pound is just, you know, poised to move much higher longer term. Uh, the, I just might be out of the market by then. Okay. So pound, that was uh, one of the... Um, uh, currencies, you know, um, the euro, and then uh, we do have we do have a Canadian some uh, dollar uh, Canadian news. I'll look at dollar CAD because DCAD it has been on a tear down, right? Um, and we didn't break out of this zone at all. <laughs> I mean, the the rise was like not even like there, <laughs> and then it dropped. Uh, and you guys watched me uh, that we, we traded that nicely, right down the week a weekly line, right down the uh, blue weekly, with that blue weekly line, and then we can take a fib on that. And you can see where this actually landed. Fibs don't lie, right? Fibs lie. Get fibs. I'm full of dad jokes. That's one. A lot of people you know, tune in to me. You know, I was taken to the office when I used to work for the broker, and they go, "Why do people like your form of humor?" It's like, um, because it's funny. <laughs> they just couldn't understand it. They're, you know, brokerages are very dry and very boring. They're not. <laughs> so, so, um, uh, and I was always lively. So I always stood out. And, and many of you guys remember me from Pip and Run. Pip and Run was a party. Every every day was a party. Um, so, um so here it is, 30% retracement. We broke that, and we retested 24.98, which is a round number near 125.00, and we're on the weekly line. Very interesting too, right? Um, shoulder, head, shoulder. Uh, if we did, if this was a head and shoulders pattern, is a bearish pattern. If you're not familiar with head and shoulders pattern, and you have a left shoulder, and you have to really use your imagination to see this, right? Yeah, I see it. Sh shoulder, head, shoulder, right? It's like Batman, really. It's like, hey. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> you know like the 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 the, the uh, bat symbol in the in the sky kind of looks like Batman, right? Really it's basically it's a bearish can uh, bearish formation. Sometimes people call it a king's a king's crown, three points on the crown and it's bearish when it's pointed this way. And we usually use a measuring objective to find um, the, we connect the top to the neckline. This line is a neckline, and we measure from the neckline to the top of the head to get a, a line measuring objective. And then you add that to the point where it broke out. And if it broke out there, then our measuring objective takes us down to 122.19, which is pretty bearish, right? Where this pattern fails, if price gets above the right shoulder, right? So if this thing, you, I mean, it's already broken out, but it's only gone halfway. And um, 
But if it does continue, we can look at 122.20. And we can actually draw a demand line across the lows here. And if we break that low of 142.22, 124.22, then we would see a continuation for a short on dollar cap. Okay. And the fulfillment of that price objective would be really cool. And the dollar index is weak, so guess what? The dollar is in the front of the Canadian dollar. So when it goes down, it means that the Canadian dollar is getting stronger and the U.S. dollar is getting weaker, right? And if you look at the gas pump, one of the keys I like doing when trading Canadian dollar, just drive down your street and look up at the gas pump sign. If gas prices are higher than they were like the day before or the week before, that means Canadian dollar is getting stronger too usually because Canada is one of the largest suppliers of oil to the United States and to the world. Okay. So they're like an OPEC kind of like, but you know, it's not as hot. Well, nowadays it's really hot there too. Right. Um, but climate, climate change blocks. See, I'm sweating. Right. Anyway. Um, so, uh, Canadian dollar could continue to rally. It's been very strong. Um, uh, but let's look at, um, so I think we, we cover the, the currencies, you know, the pound, the Euro, and we looked at the U.S. dollar, and um, we looked at the pound versus the U.S. dollar. So those are the currencies. And you want to look at, you know, maybe pound, pound CAD or pound, you know, uh, pound Aussie as well. Um, but I want to look at Bitcoin. Okay. I know you guys are like, oh, Greg, when are you going to get the Bitcoin? Okay, don't worry. I'm going to get to it. BTC USD is a ticker, and we're going to go crypto. And I'll use a Coinbase quote, right? And, um, let me just remove all drawings. Okay, start from scratch. And you can see that we had this perilous drop from the old highs. I'm gonna go to the daily, go a little higher up. Look at that. Okay. So, oh, and I, I don't have any uh, classic support and resistance lines drawn. Um, 64,976 was the high. And we had a low here. Very interesting. If you took a, uh, if you took this low over here, which was um, uh, 38.18, well, such a long time ago, March 13, 2020. Don't you, like, kick yourself every time you look at this chart and go, hey, I could have bought that. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like, um, or I sold 1999 and doubled my money. <laughs> really? Is that it? Okay. Well, so here we go. We took our low, connected it to our high from the bottom to the top, and now we're here. Price dropped, 23% retracement. It, I mean, it tried. It bounced off of it. But I tell you, the 23 rarely ever holds. That's why you probably don't see it on charts. But it does serve as like a stopover, right? Price drops down, 38% retracement. And it just cut through that. Didn't even. But the 50% retracement at 34.96. But then it dropped down almost to the 618 at 27 232 and that's why i was actually looking for it to hit but i'm sure everybody and everybody's mama was looking at that too and price turned around every time i got closed people would say hey, i'm just gonna buy it so you had a lot of you know buyers look at the look at the how many hits at this at this area and which is an old area i mean this area was already pre-tagged already back in the back in january right there right they already pre-tagged it, and then boom, it came right to there. There, when it when it left here, those buy orders were there. Price came back down, and then boom, we have this rocket. Okay, so okay, Greg, we see that now. What? Okay, well, I would also take you know another thing we could do is take a Fibonacci expansion from the top to this this pullback, right? It's boom, right? And there's your 1.618 expansion. We hit it right to the pip, 29.151, right? Um, and I, I, and I saw this too. I think I even posted it too, and I just took my eyes off the ball. Okay, but again, this is no FOMO, no FOMO. If you missed it, don't worry, be happy, right? Because guess what? We have an established low. Let me show you, show you a trick. I have Patreon, I'll put it up because it's will make again, this is you know, this is for illustration and educational purposes only. 
We have an established low. We have an established high. Right? It's like a single lady. You want, you know, put a fee, you want you put a thing, put a ring on it, right? Well, I'm gonna put a fib on it. Put a fib on it. So oh 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 put a fib on it. Put a fib on it. So there's my fib. So here we go. Now that's if this is an established high. Well, I mean, this is an old fib level. It's that Guess what? It's that 38% retracement that it didn't even touch, right? It went right through it. So, but guess what? You gotta pay your respects to the 38. So, guess what? It came to the 38 and paid its respects because it didn't do it over here. It came through, made a little bit of a tag. But this is a real respect to give some healthy respect to the 38% retracement. 41,738. Okay. So, if this is my established low and this is my established high, then. 23 usually doesn't hold, so forget uh, 39,417, though I would keep an eye on it because there's some long wicks there. 38% retracement is 37,480. 50% is 35,914. What this means is I'm looking for price to come down to one of these areas, either here. And this is like, you know, one of my clients told me, you know, this is like Dr. Seuss. I go, how is this like Dr. Seuss? How is this like Dr. Seuss? It's like green eggs and ham, Sam, I am. I don't like the 23% retracement. I like the 50. You like the, you like the 38. No, I don't like the 38, so Sam, I am. I like the, you like the 50. Do you like the 50 with green eggs and ham, Sam, I am? No, I don't like the 50% retracement. I like the 61.8% the retracement. It's like, so it's either going to come to one of these and bounce, right? Which means I wouldn't be buying here because if I bought here... I have to watch Sam I Am play out, right? And I probably don't want to do that, right? Now, ideally, <laughs> I'd love to see this thing come back to 34,647. Uh, 34, Write that down. 34,647. That's a 61% retracement. 61.8% um, Fibonacci retracement. There are probably all kinds of uh, robots and buy stop orders and everything there. But it probably won't get down there because we probably have all this old, old supply right there, which has now flipped from being supply to being demand, right? So this demand area, 35,914 35, is what I would look for, right? So be patient. You know, don't have FOMO. FOMO means fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. FOMO. Okay. Fear. Okay. And that's what get people to say they see FOMO. They saw price going up to sixty four thousand and they went long at sixty four. And then they got to endure the pain. They have to endure all this pain watching price go against them, right? Because what they do is they buy when they see it go up. Typically, you see something go up, oh, I buy because it goes up. But you don't want to buy when it goes up. You want to you want to buy when it comes down. You want to buy cheap, right? You always want to buy cheap. You, you do it all the time. You go to the car dealer, and the guy goes, oh, I want uh, it's forty two thousand dollars. Forty two thousand dollars? Are you kidding? I'll give you 37 for it. And the guy goes, deal, right? And you see some shoes and you go, I don't want to buy that. I don't, you know, I'll wait till it goes on sale, right? And you may not. You might say, look, I shell out the cash. I don't care about no sales. I want what I want when I see it. And if you're rolling like that, that's cool. But I don't care how much money I ever get. I'm always going to look for a deal. Because <laughs> it's fun, you know. <laughs> um, fear, fear of missing out. Okay. So fear of missing out. Fear. If you're missing out if you buy here. Now, and, and the, but there's no guarantee that price does not go higher. Okay, so well, Greg, I waited and it went to forty-seven thousand. You know, I missed out on making six thousand dollar profit thanks to you. Like, remember, it's educational purposes only, right? I would just look for, for me personally, I have, I have a bearish Harami candle there, right? Bullish candle for small body candle. You remember, that's what we learned about, right? Looking for a reversal there. Maybe this turns into an evening star, right? 
and then we get some type of a pullback. You know, I'm sure they're going to jank it up and down a little bit in order to uh, lure people in, right? But so many people are like, this is it. I'm a hodler, man, diamond hodler, move. this is it, man. And it's like, yeah. And then they'll jump in right here, and then they take it down, stop everybody out, and then take it the other way, right? And that's what progress, that's what market makers do, right? I used to work for, you know, that, that's what, that's what happens, right? So this is what I'm looking for. Um, let me know what you think in the chat box, if this is, um, you know, helpful, useful, and, uh, you know, um, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm looking at. Similar for gold, doing something similar too. If you look at uh, gold, um, and a big shout out to Mimi, the golden girl. She was on my live stream the other day, encouraging me as the um, hero was eating my lunch. But she was, she trades gold. And uh, so I actually, I like looking at gold too. Oh, gold. Well, here we go. Well, um, I mean, we didn't we didn't get to a, a, a zone there, but what we can do here is take that old high and take a fifth on that. So let me go ahead and remove this stuff if you're trading gold. So bulls versus bears on 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 uh, on, on on this um, on Bitcoin. Going back to that, um, I'm bullish. But not now. <laughs> so, so are you bearish? I'm not bearish. I wouldn't short it. You know, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take your money and short it. I wouldn't take anybody's money and short it. I would take my enemy's money and short it. Um, however, I would want a better buying opportunity because I'm just. I'm, I look for value, I'm, right? So here is we got the uh, fifty percent, eighteen thirty four, eighteen. And maybe if we can come back down to 1790, I don't, maybe we don't get there. I mean, this is kind of bearish, you know, four hour daily chart, weekly, you know, I think we get, and this one, see, it's really weird. Ooh, you know, we got this pullback, pullback to a trend line. Here's our trend line, but it should be a demand line. It should be green. So we have a, we have a pullback. And we're at the bottom of the triangle. So I'm I'm bullish on gold. Yeah. Because we're taking out these long wicks are eating up all the supply, all these zones should be like would be gone. Because the long wick came down, came back up. So once they clear all that out, they can it's clear for them to take it north. Okay. But uh anyway, um just wanna see uh hey John, John Cottonball, how you doing buddy? Thanks for the likes and the shares and stuff like that. Appreciate you guys. But, um, yeah. So come over to the Forex Cash Machine if you want to join a group that is active and friendly and supportive. You know, like Colin and uh, Thomas did. You know, come over, Facebook groups. And you can type it's Forex Cash Machine or you can go to www.the... The... Forex cash machine machine type dot com. Okay. So it but it's the number four, right? But you can search for it too. And I and if you like the uh the tool, the my market heat map, it, it, it's a really cool um cool cool all stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my market email. You can try it out for a dollar. It's the best dollar that you'll ever spend, and you'll get to try a whole suite of tools and um, in my market heat map. And you also can learn more about it. There's also a sample right there of the forex majors. They're not moving right now, but it, this comes alive when the market is active, right? And also you can watch a video about the my market heat map. And it's just, not just the my market heat map. It's a trader toolbox and education. There's 81 instructional videos to teach you how to trade Forex. So isn't that cool? 81 videos plus a way, uh, you know, showing you like, you know, what's, what's moving in the market and also other tools for, for trading the market, right? Plus $9,700 of the bonuses um, that are in there as well. Okay. So try that out. Go to www.mymarketmap.com. If you want to purchase it, 
Uh, normally it's $199.97, but you can use the uh, coupon code HEATMAP75 and get 75% off uh, using the code that's circulating above on the scrolling letters, right? Now, um, if you want to, uh, uh, to find out more about Elite Traders University, come down to EliteTradersUniversity.com. We got some free gifts to you. We have an income boost blueprint. Um, you can learn more about the Forex market and how we approach the market in this free publication. Just enter your name and email address, and we won't spam you or sell your information. Um, but you can uh, get hooked into my updates and other things, too. Be part of our growing uh, mailing community, okay? Uh, also, there's a free masterclass here, Four Pillars for On-Demand Trading Profits and Financial Freedom. It's an on-demand webinar. Um, you can watch it anytime. Um, um, you know, it's just set aside 45 minutes to an hour. I, I have a trading uh, uh, session in there. You can see people who we've helped and uh, how the system actually works. So if you want to find out more about it, you can register here, uh, EliteTradersUniversity.com, get access, okay? And also, but if you're, uh, you know, ready for to, to maybe, you know, get professional help in your trading, stop DIYing it to help you have more clarity in your trading, to have better entries, more profitable, faster, and to work with myself, a 25-year former Wall Street trading veteran, um, you know, and currency analyst, uh, then, you know, it would help, you know, you want, you can go over to EliteTradersUniversity.com and apply to speak to one of our representatives, one of our enrollment specialists, find out if it's right for you. We'll lay out a blueprint. We'll see what's going on. We'll ask you some questions, see what's going on if you're trading, and see if we can help you or not. But we'll give you a blueprint. If, and you can either take that blueprint and and apply it to your own trading yourself, or if you say, look, I'm tired of doing I've been trying to do it myself for like five years or ten years or four years, or you no. Know, you just want it. like you want fast results. If you want to results fast, then ask about our program and we'll tell you about that program and tell you, uh, you know, all, what it all involves uh, and how it can help you, if we can help you. If it makes sense for us to work with each other, we'll offer you up as one of the few remaining spots in our training program. And, and if not, then we'll par off as friends. Okay? So uh, that's going to be it for me. I want to thank you so, so very much for taking your Saturday or whatever day you're watching this and uh, being in the room or being live, giving me thumbs up and sharing and and all that good stuff. And uh, I'm sorry, my YouTube people, I didn't, uh, I don't know if anyone over there on YouTube, but I just want to, you know, I should have a, a YouTube link open, Greg. You know, I, I appreciate my YouTubers because I saw Mimi over there and Stefan, uh, Stefanovich over there and some others. Here, okay, here we go. Hey, I'm there. Who's there? Anybody in chat? Okay. No? All right. Okay. All right, so we've been on for a long time. This has been a longer video than uh, than ordinary, but let me know that you liked it, that you enjoyed it, it's helpful. Let me know, encourages me to do it. And we don't charge for this, so we provide lots of value, I hope. And uh, let me know how your trades go during the week. Because they're like, Greg, thanks so much for your help. And, you know, lets me know, it gets me fired up, you know, uh, since I'm not charging you. Yeah, give me a compliment or something. Let me know uh, that if this is of some help. Um, I do enjoy doing it, and I do really want to see you succeed. I want you to be my next case study. I want you to come to Elite Traders University, and I want to be on the beach with you, you know, having an adult beverage and looking at this ocean and making money on demand. Sounds good? Sounds good? Well, then take up my invitation. Go to EliteTradersUniversity.com forward slash apply and get started today. All right. Peace and pips. Happy pipping. Greg Platt signing out. Cheers.